All right. Hi. Okay, here we are. Um, I don't even know what day we are on for this journey. I think day seven. Um, but excited to have you all here. And I wanted today to bring some attention to the times in your lives where you've made a mistake and then you just keep beating yourself up about it. And to encourage you to let it go. Stop putting so much attention and focus on that area of your life because you know, I say this all the time, what you focus on grows. And if you're finding yourself getting derailed by thoughts about the past, that's not gonna help you create what you wanna create because you're gonna just continue to be stuck where if you choose to be a person who can acknowledge a mistake or even a mistake by another person, and forgive them, forgive yourself, and then let it go, you'll be able to move on and grow from that. So I want you to take a moment and write down in your journal, what is it that you keep replaying in your mind? What thing or what situation? Maybe it is, again, maybe it's a situation with a person. Maybe it's a situation where you've made a mistake, a financial mistake. Maybe it's somebody at work, someone on your team, um, whatever, family, I don't know. But go ahead, write that down in your journal. If you want to comment with what it is, go ahead and drop a comment. And then I will teach you what has been my favorite, one of my favorite um, activities that I've become very well known for doing because it is that powerful. Okay? So write down whatever that is. And again, this could be a mistake that you've made or something you've done. Now I want you to write down, how do you feel? And a lot of times people say, how does it make you feel? Or so-and-so makes me feel, or this makes me feel. But I want you to consider what, when we use the wor those words, this is making me feel X, Y, Z, or so-and-so is making me feel X, Y, Z. That's actually disempowering because you get to choose how you feel in the situation, right? And let's be honest, a lot of these problems are first world problems, right? <laughs> and so if you think about it, yes, there might be a lot of drama around a certain situation, but ultimately, isn't it really just a first world problem? Think about that. So let that sink in. And it's not to belittle, right? But it's really to think, okay, I actually do have all my basic needs met. I am safe. There aren't bombs dropping out of the sky or my water well is poisoned or whatever hap is happening to the majority of the world's population right now in this moment. And so I want you to put things into perspective. Also put things into perspective as it relates to your entire life, right? Because it's very easy to get wrapped up in things that derail us in the moment and feel like it's never ending and there's no way around it, et cetera. Okay, so we got those written down. Wendy, did you hop on? <laughs> yep, I'm here. Hi. Hello. Anything to add? Well, I just hopped on, so I just got the oh, last tail it. end of that. You know what I'm talking about, so you can add to it. <laughs> <laughs> I think just choosing that I love what you said because nobody has power over making you feel a certain way. So even for me, I will, I have certain people in my life that trigger me. Um, and when that happens and I catch myself going, Oh my gosh, I can't believe she said that, or she's making me feel uncomfortable or whatever that is. I catch myself and go, no, she doesn't have that control. I get to choose. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's me. I'm the one that is either allowing her to make me feel uncomfortable or I am allowing her to make me feel a certain way. And that's not the truth. That's me giving my power over to her. Yeah. So it doesn't happen. That doesn't have to happen that way. So it's yeah, very, very the... powerful for you to own your own power and not give it over to someone else. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
exactly. And I think that in all of these different areas that we've talked about over the past week, that's the common theme, isn't it? Is self-empowerment. Take back your power, right? Rather than letting other people or situations or our culture or whatever determine your value, your worth, your opportunity, take back your power and make the decision that you are the one who's in charge here. You get to choose how you feel about a situation. You get to choose how you learn from a challenge versus feel like a loser or whatever words you use to describe yourself when you haven't um, met your expectation in your own mind. <laughs> um, so basically now you all have written down your challenges right now in the moment. And the process that I employ when I feel frustrated is bless and release. And those of you who have been with me for any length of time know this. And um, what you do is you take a moment to get centered, deep breath, close your eyes, go into your heart, get out of your head, and just ask God to come into the moment and, and just literally, okay, God, I'm here before you. I would love to see you working in my heart and my mind right now because I keep spinning about the same scenario or I'm holding a grudge and it's holding me back and I haven't forgiven and I'm finding it really, really hard. Like whatever it is that is on your heart, just pour that out into your prayer and tell God if you're frustrated. There's nothing wrong with saying that in prayer. He wants to know that because he can support you through it. And I think a lot of times in prayer, people will try and, and, and not go there because they have this like a uh, good girl, good boy scenario going on with God where they need to pray a perfect prayer and not actually be real people. <laughs> But also, but also God already knows the condition of your heart. Mm -hmm. Like he already knows exactly. what you're thinking. He already knows your thoughts. He already knows your feelings. Mm -hmm. And specifically in the Bible, he has asked people, where are you? And when he asked, where are you? He, I mean, think about it. God doesn't need to ask you where you are. He was asking the condition of their heart. He already knew the condition of their heart. He, he knew physically where they were. He knew mentally and emotionally where they were. But he wanted them to come to him open and honest. And so there is, because we're opening up a vulnerability of us. We, we're being authentic. And that is being true to ourselves. So it's not about being um, shameful or guilty or scared. It's about yeah. being honest with who we are. And there's, I've also have learned a, the different difference between saying, I am stressed and then I am feeling, or I am starting to notice I am feeling a little anxious. We're disassociating the feeling from who we are. So instead of saying, I am stressed, I am stupid, I am an idiot, all of these awful things that you should, we should not say to ourselves, you, you can say, I am starting to notice that I am feeling a little off about the situation because then you separate that emotion from who you are and then you get to stand back like you're a bystander and then go, okay, so I'm starting to feel this way. What can I do about that? How can I shift that, refocus it and treat that differently? So good and so true back here for something i can't find it my water don't know where it is all right so think about that let it sink in now take a moment and actually say that prayer to god and then also ask for him to bless bless the person bless whatever the scenario is bless you bless god do the blessing because that comes before asking for him to release you from spinning out around this all the time because it's actually unproductive. And he doesn't want you to spend all of your time in spinning around. And so we need to ask for the blessing. And Hey, Josh, it's Jennifer. I'm going to put my friend Jennifer Jones on the phone with us. I want to... <laughs> there we are. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Do that next. Blessing and then ask to be, for the release and then also ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness for yourself, forgiveness for the other person.
Okay, once you're done, you can do a little writing in your journal about that and how it feels to do that process because this is something that I think you'll probably have to come back to again and again and again. <laughs> I know I sure do. I had a new one in mind when I just did it myself. And actually, it wasn't new. I've done this bless and release over this situation umpteen gazillion times. But hello. Clearly needed to do it again. Because it was a situation that woke me up in the night. And then I couldn't fall back asleep. I mean, can you relate? I'm sure you can. <laughs> so that's the technique I'm teaching you all today. I want you to apply it. And whatever comes up for you, write about it in your journal. Um, through today, tomorrow, every day, I would encourage you to incorporate going to your journal whenever you feel triggered or emotionally off balance. Drop it into the notebook so you can start to pay attention to what does trigger you. Where are you not empowered? Where are you showing up, um, uh, what's the word, with lack of empowerment? You know, write that down. Take back my power. I get to choose my feelings. I get to choose the lesson in the challenge. And I don't need to go in blaming others, right? That will never be productive. A person who lives their life blaming others and not taking ownership for their participation in creating the challenges that they experience are never going to live a life of freedom because they're always going to be blaming other people, the um, politics, the state of the company, the state of the country, the state of the you know, community, whatever. See, they live a life of blaming in victimhood. And to become a person who lives a life of freedom, return to love, look for the lesson, play, um, do your part in taking ownership for whatever role you play in, in creating the life that you're living today, right? Rather, you're not, you don't have a total lack of power in whatever the situation is that challenges you. So that's why the journal is such a powerful thing, is it allows you to actually get clear with yourself and take ownership of your life instead of just blaming others and is that in itself is very empowering and produces freedom whether money comes in or not right but we can't truly live the life that we were designed to live when we're always living in a place of disempowerment and that my friends is probably the great lesson of the journey to freedom is this awakening and discovery that you play a significant role in creating the life of your dreams and this journey to freedom is directly tied to your daily habits it's directly tied to your belief in the ability to choose how you think and you feel and your ability to have autonomy and to learn and reflect and take ownership of mistakes, etc. So I want you to use this journal as that opportunity. Now, the other thing, we're, we're gearing up for the spring detox. So if you are a thriver, the products I recommend you have on hand are your three simple steps, boost, additional lifestyle mix, and balance. And we'll be starting this on Wednesday. So uh, those are the products you'll want to order if you haven't ordered them yet. But I think most people are ready. And if you're not ready, you can still do this without the products, okay? Because there's other components. And this is a time where I'm going to lead you through a spring detox and help you to really be in the moment and there for your body because body, mind, spirit, all directly tied to success in our business. Guess what? <laughs> so and our relationships right all of these things are tied together people who think that they aren't uh they're going to realize at some point in their life that they are so we might as well re realize it today so i'll be going live on facebook about that and um, helping people prepare and just want you guys to stay tuned because we'll be doing that very soon so with that i'm going to hop off because you guys can do some of this work on your own i want you to work in your journal i want you to go to the abide app or the breathe app and do your meditation and prayer and then journal afterwards and that should you can choose the length of the meditation or the abide um, series that you listen to, it, you can choose the length from five to 25 minutes, I think. So take your pick, whichever is resonating more with you. And I will go do the post in the group so that you can hop over there and post your comments and takeaways from today. Also, the recording will go live there later. Okay. Love you all. We'll see you soon.